workplace harassment today. So I do want to go ahead and apologize in advance. Workplace harassment can be a very dry topic, but it is pertinent. It is something that we do need to talk about, get training. However, I will go through it pretty quick, okay? All right, so the definition of illegal harassment, according to the US EEOC, is harassment is any unwelcome conduct that is based on race, color, religion, sex, including pregnancy, national origin, age, disability, genetic information, or military status, okay? So anti-discrimination laws prevent or prohibit harassment against anyone for um, retaliation, for filing a, a claim or a charge, for testifying, participating, any of those things. So this is just so we can get started the definition of illegal harassment. So there are laws that outline <coughs> harassment in some of these things. So just to go through some of those, you've got Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, Equal Pay Act, Age Discrimination, Pregnancy Discrimination, USERA, and GINA. So if you um, are having trouble sleeping at night and you need something to, to make you fall asleep, go pull any of these acts up, read through them, and you should get a good night's sleep. All right, so two things with harassment. Harassment becomes unlawful when, and you have to go under one of these two tenets here. So the first is that enduring the offensive conduct becomes, becomes a condition of continued employment. And then the second is that the conduct is severe or pervasive enough to create a hostile working environment that a reasonable person would consider hostile, okay? So offensive conduct, how many of you have ever uh, witnessed offensive conduct here at Wendell Foster? Show of hands, okay? Just Jeff, right? Just Jeff. Um, so here's a list of offensive conduct. This is not an all-inclusive list, um, but it's just some examples that you will see. Um, some of this conduct could be considered harassment depending on how severe or pervasive that it is, okay? So jokes, slurs, um, obviously physical assault, <coughs> threats. So you just kind of want to be aware of what you're doing and what you're saying because it very easily could turn into harassment. To be considered illegal, workplace harassment must be directed at one of the federal classes or um, of the classes protected by federal law. So if you and a coworker are having a disagreement, is that harassment? No. Probably not. It could turn into that, but probably not. If you're just having a conflict with someone, then it's probably not. Now, if you and the coworker have an issue and they say it's because you're old, it's because you're female, um, it's because you're pregnant, for example, would that be considered harassment? Very possibly, yes, because they are um, doing it because of a protected class that you're in, okay? So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. We use harassment, we throw that word a lot around a lot in today's society. We throw bullying around a lot in today's society. We really need to be educated on what these things mean because um, I will tell you, we get a lot of reports and just in general that someone is being harassed and it doesn't actually fit the description of harassment. It's just a conflict with someone. So we need to be aware and educated as to what the differences are so that if someone truly is being harassed or bullied that we can actually do something about it. So is workplace bullying considered harassment? What do you guys think? Yes, no? Yes, it can be. It not always is, but it can be, and it very quickly can turn into that. So it is never acceptable. It's not considered a type of illegal harassment, though, unless it's directed at one of the protected classes or it creates a hostile working environment. So again, if someone points out it's because of the color of your skin or because of your age or gender, then it could turn into and be considered harassment. But if someone is bullying you just in general because they don't like you, but they've never indicated that it's because of any of the your protected classes, if you are a protected class, then that's where there's some gray area and we have to evaluate um, the severity and see how pervasive that it is. The issue, though, is they're so close and it's because they cause hurt and harm. And so and there's a power control aspect to it. So the person that's usually doing the harassing or doing the bullying has um, the power to do that over another person. Doesn't mean that they're necessarily a supervisor, but they've taken on the power to be able to speak those things or say those things or do those things. And those actions hurt and harm whoever's receiving those. So here's some examples of workplace bullying. Verbal abuse, profanity, humiliation, teasing, gossip. How many of us have heard gossip here? Um, aggressive emails, not going to go through the full list. But this could be some examples of workplace bullying that we have. Okay? 
So we're going to go into sexual harassment now. So sexual harassment is a form of unlawful sex-based discrimination. So it's unwelcome. It can be verbal, visual, nonverbal, physical, um, anything that is based on someone's gender or sex and that is severe or pervasive and could affect the working condition or environment. So here's some key phrases that we need to go through. Unwelcome, okay? So this is, and also with harassment in itself, um, different people look at things differently and have a different perceptive perception or perspective of things. Everybody looks through things with different colored glasses or, or through a different lens. So, for example, <laughs> if someone were to come up to me and tell me, hey, you look really nice today, I really like your hair like that. It is all about how I perceive it, not necessarily the intent of the person who gives me the compliment. So if they are in totally good intentions, they just wanted to pay me a compliment, I receive that compliment and it's not unwelcome, I'm like, oh, that was very nice. I spent a lot of time on my hair today. Then there was no harassment that took place there. Now, if that person says it to someone else, they could say the exact same thing to someone else who does not appreciate that compliment. Um, then it would be unwelcome at that point in time. It does not mean that that's harassment because the law states that certain one-off situations that are not severe or pervasive are not sexual harassment, but if it continues, then it could be, okay? So again, going into the different types of sexual harassment, it can be verbal, so someone can say something to you, it could be written, it could be physical, so someone could physically touch you, even if they give you a pat on the back, um, depending on how unwelcome or welcome it is. It can be nonverbal, so making gestures, expressions, body scanning someone, um, visual, so displaying sexual information with someone. So again, it goes into if it's severe or pervasive, um, if it frequently persists, if there's one-offs, but you can add those up and they continue to occur, then it could be considered severe or pervasive. So this is where there's no black and white. How many of you are black and white people? You like rules, you like to know what is the right answer and what's not the right answer. Anybody like, don't go to HR and don't do anything with harassment because it is so gray that it's really based on the perception of the person who is dealing with it. So when something is reported to me as harassment, I'm gonna ask these three questions in the, in the investigation process. So first, how many times did the incident occur? Okay, the next is how long has it been going on? And are there other people of the same gender that are also being treated this way? This is going to go ahead and tell me the severity and how pervasive something is to determine if it is in fact sexual harassment. So again, it can create that hostile working environment where people don't want to come to work, they're sick to their stomach, it can cause anxiety, depression, there are a lot of issues that harassment and sexual harassment can cause. We don't want any of those things to occur, so we want to try to make it a safe working environment for everyone if possible. Now intent versus impact, I went into this a little bit earlier, it's all about the perception of the victim and not the intent of the accuser. So the intent is not relative. So if you want to tell someone that they look nice today, you need to know, know your audience. You need to make sure that it's probably not going to offend them, um, that it would be welcome. Uh, we live in the South, so we say, um, hey girl, or hey honey, how are you? Hi darling, hi sweetheart. Um, we use pet names a lot. That can be considered um, offensive conduct. Um, so have you ever had someone, I know I have, when I said, hey, hey girl, how are you? I'm not your girl, don't call me your girl. They did, it was unwelcome. They spoke up and said it. I was able to modify my behavior and everything was fine. It's when you continue that that we have issues, okay? So look at it as that even if you do something to someone, and most of the time when I investigate harassment and sexual harassment, the person did not intend for it to be that way. They didn't know their behavior was wrong unless it is pervasive. Um, they generally didn't know that anything was wrong with, or that anyone was offended. They just needed to be made aware so they could modify their behavior. And that's the biggest thing we want to do is empower employees to make sure that you speak up and that you let the person know, hey, this is unwelcome, so that they can modify their behavior and there aren't any other issues. Okay? So this is on your test, two types of sexual harassment. The first is going to be quid pro quo. And that means this for that. So this is generally a supervisor or someone in a power of authority position who is going to be able to um, threaten in a way. So your employment or monetary loss or change of a job. So if you do not give me blank, then you will not receive a promotion. Or I will cut your pay or one of these different things. So it's a this for that. 
they have to be in a position of authority to be able to threaten you, essentially. And then the other is the hostile work environment. So speech or conduct that is so severe or pervasive that it creates that abusive work environment where you do not want to come to work. This does not have to be a supervisor. It can be a co-worker. It can be another supervisor from another area. It can be an outside vendor, third party. It is not a supervisor in all cases here. Here's some example of hostile work environments. So pornography, violence, vulgar language, degrading comment, embarrassing questions. That's something that you have to know your audience to make sure that what you're asking is appropriate and professional at all times. Other forms of sexual harassment, these are things that you don't think about. So the first is a third party. So if we have this table here, and I don't need to pick on you guys, you're talking about um, relations and your personal lives, and someone from this table overhears it and they're offended, that could be considered sexual harassment. So just because all of you are okay with the conversation doesn't mean that the environment is conducive to that to that behavior and that other people are not around who would not find that offensive okay so you need to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings and what's going on because other people can hear it and be offended by that um, and then of course if there's third party people here so if canteen is here stocking the vending machines and they are taking part in um, being offensive to someone, I need to know about that so I can address it. But if you're in the break room having conversations and they find it offensive, that could be considered sexual harassment. And then same sex. In 1998, they stated that same sex harassment is also illegal and is not going to be tolerated. Here's some examples of sexual harassment. I don't think that we really need to go into these because I think you all uh, are pretty familiar of what could occur. So who can be a harasser? Who can be a harasser? Anyone, Anyone can be a harasser. Um, now, it does not mean that you intended to be a harasser, but that you could be a harasser and you need to bonify your behavior, okay? Um, it can be a supervisor, it can be a coworker. Um, it does not have to be, the victim does not have to be the person harassed, but it can be anybody in the offensive conduct environment. Okay? So this is, again, why we want to push, make sure that you know what you're saying and that if someone comes to you and says, I do not like the way that you were talking about blank, that is offensive conduct, that we are not automatically critical and, and argue back with them, but that we are made self-aware of what we did and try to modify our behavior. Okay? All right, so what should you do if you are a victim of harassment? What's the first thing that you should do? Speak up. Speak up. You want to report it, but you want to tell the person your, your conduct is unwelcome. Okay? If you never tell them that it's unwelcome, they're never going to know to stop. Okay? Now, I will put the disclaimer that there are severe and pervasive situations where it's obvious that it's going to be unwelcome if someone forces something. Um, but if someone is, gives you a friendly hug every day and you don't like it, but they don't realize, you need to say, hey, please don't touch me. I, I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. So you need to make them aware so that they can change that behavior, okay? If they don't change that behavior, that's when we need to address it and have issues because you need to be empowered to say, this is my body or this is my situation. I will or will not allow myself to be treated in this manner, okay? Um, you also need to make a written record of the incident and you need to report it to your supervisor and to HR. And here's an example of things. So dates, times, witnesses, what they've said, how you responded, all of these things, okay? You're gonna report it to HR and your supervisor. Um, you can also be an observer of harassment. So there are times where someone observes someone else being harassed. So if you are an observer, you're gonna offer support and empathy to that person. Let them know that you observed it, that you're going to be writing up a report, telling your supervisor that you're a witness so that you know, they can, we can investigate the situation and we have substantiated whatever claims there are. Now, for supervisors, federal law requires that those in, posi in positions of authority take action if they know or should have known of discriminatory behaviors, okay? And these have to be substantiated, but you cannot go to a supervisor who you see as a friend and say, hey, I need to tell you about what Joe did. Um, don't tell anybody. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I just need somebody to know. They have to tell somebody. They are a mandatory reporter. They're required to report on this, okay? Under federal law, they can be held personally liable if they do not report that and we don't investigate it, okay? So understand that when you go to a supervisor that they have to report it, we have to look into it and do something about it. So here's what our reporting process looks like. 
Um, so if you're a victim or a witness, you're going to make an official report to us in HR in writing immediately. We're going to initiate a formal investigation um, that can be within 10 working days after it's filed and then it takes up to 15 days to complete the investigation. And then we're going to prepare a written report and recommendation to the CEO on what the situation is. We also have the um, whistleblower hotline. Um, so if you are uncomfortable, because especially sexual harassment, it can be a very shameful thing. It can be a very, uh, you can feel a lot of guilt with it. There are several different feelings that you can have where you are not comfortable having a discussion about it with your supervisor or HR. If you don't know me very well, then you don't feel safe bearing your soul to me, and I understand that, okay? But we do need to know about these things if they occur. So we have the anonymous tip line that you can call. You do, it's anonymous, um, you can give your name, you're not required to do so. You can call, you can go onto the portal on the website, or you can send an email. And they will send that directly to me so I can begin the investigation, okay? So understand that there is a way for you to be anonymous and report this information so that we can still look into it and do something about it. Now, what I do want you to know is this is a little more difficult. Does not mean we can't look into it, but if you come and talk to me, I know what questions to ask and I can get very specific to determine what we need to do about it. If you send an email and you say, Johnny looked at me in the hallway weird today, and you don't tell me who you are, then there's not much I can do, because how many Johnnies do we have? Which hallway was it? What does weird mean? Has he ever done it before? There's a lot of questions I have that if I don't know who you are, I can't have that conversation back and forth to determine what's going on. I can just kind of watch all the Johnnies at Wendell Foster to see what happens, okay? So this is on your test. How can we stop disrupt, disrupt, disrespectful behavior? So it's STOP. It's an acronym. Source. S is source. T is target. O is observer. And P is person in authority. So the source of the inappropriate conduct is the person who's actually doing it. They have the responsibility to stop these actions. They must take responsibility and stop these actions. Okay? So that's your S. That's your source. S is source. T is for target. This is the person who is receiving the behavior. Um, so they are required to confront the harasser, and if they're offended, they need to let the person know so that that person can stop if possible. O is observer. That's the person who is observing any respectful, disrespectful behavior. So witnesses in the area, they're never, um, if you notice it, you're not necessarily just a bystander. You need to make sure that you report these things because you're going to lend, lend credibility to the investigation. Um, so again, consider that the disrespectful behavior may or may not be known um, or that it's offensive. Um, for example, I have resting face sometimes, and I don't mean to. It's just me when I'm concentrating and I'm being serious. And I'll have people say, what's wrong? Are you mad? And so I may come off as intimidating or mean looking, and that's not my intention at all. Um, it's just my face, and I'm sorry, you know. Um, however, once I'm made aware of that, then I can start trying to change my behavior or what I am perceived as, okay? So we need to make sure that we confront people in a nice and kind, respectful way, telling them, hey, please modify your behavior, um, because they may not have intentions of doing that. It's when they do not change their behavior, do not see an issue of it, that we need to address it. All right, last is person in authority. This is anyone in authority um, who you're going to report it to. We all have that duty to keep the workplace free from offensive and harassing behavior. Okay? All right, so then care about what you say, how you say it before you say it, judge your audience, kind of like the golden rule that we have um, that you heard about when you were kids. Just mutual respect, um, making sure that what you say is respectful, even when you're upset, even when you're angered or you're elevated to another level, making sure that you take that time to decompress, de-escalate, and then uh, approach each situation in a professional manner. All right, so we have an EAP program. How many of you have heard about our EAP program? I hope it's all of you. Um, EAP is an employee assistance program. This offers short-term, non-emergent outpatient counseling to individuals who feel um, that they need counseling, that they need assistance. And it's not just work-related. It can be family, marital, pa um, parenting. Um, it can be conflict at work. It can be stress management, depression, anxiety, grief. There's a variety of different things that it can cover. So this is something that Wendell Foster pays for for you and for your immediate family. Okay? So if they live in your house and you think someone needs counseling, then you call this number here. We've got resources here on the table and some of them at the table over here. Um, and, or you can come to HR and we've got flyers too. 
Um, that is completely confidential. They don't tell us when you go. They don't tell us when you don't go. We know nothing about it. We just get a bill, okay? Um, that gets you six EAP visits per year per issue, okay? Um, issue is where you get into it because if you have depression and anxiety, that's two different issues. That's 12 visits, okay? So six free visits per issue for everyone in your family, okay? All right, any questions about anything that we went over? No? All right, let's go over the test real quick. Make sure everybody gets 100. I'm going to have you guys answer them for me, okay? All right, so number one, harassment become unlawful when A, during the offensive conduct becomes a condition of continued employment, B, the conduct, conduct is severe enough to create a hostile working environment, C, both A and B, or D, neither? C, good job. Two, to be considered illegal, workplace harassment must be directed at one of the classes protected by federal law. True. True. Three, workplace bullying is a type of illegal harassment. False. 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 It is not considered illegal harassment unless it infringes on one of the protected classes. What are the two types of sexual harassment? Quid pro quo and hostile work environment. Number five, what should someone do if they or someone else are being harassed? Speak up. Speak up. Report to their supervisor. Take notes. Say no. Yeah, there's various answers to this. All of those are correct. And then six, what does stop stand for? S? T? O? P? And number seven, do we have an EAP? True. Thank you, guys.